Buenos días, clase. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Recuerdan esta pregunta? Do you guys remember this question? ¿Cómo estás? Means, how are you? Estoy bien. I'm good or I'm well. Estoy bien. Estoy así, así. Estoy así, así. I'm okay. Estoy mal. Estoy mal. I'm not good. I'm not okay. Espero que estés bien. I hope that you are good. Vamos a repasar. Let's review los días de la semana, the days of the week. Starting with Monday. Lunes. Lunes. Martes. Martes. That's Tuesday. Miércoles. Miércoles. Wednesday. Jueves. Jueves. Thursday. Viernes. Viernes. Friday. Sábado. Sábado. Saturday. Domingo. Domingo. Sunday. Si yo quiero decir, if I want to say, today is Thursday, hoy es jueves, hoy es jueves. Muy bien, hoy, today, hoy es jueves, today is Thursday. If I want to say, yesterday was Wednesday, Ayer fue miércoles. Ayer fue miércoles. Yesterday was Wednesday. Ayer, yesterday. Hoy, today. If I want to say tomorrow will be Friday, mañana será viernes. Mañana será viernes. Tomorrow will be Friday. Hoy, today. Ayer, yesterday. Mañana, tomorrow. Vamos a, vamos a decir las estaciones. Let's say the seasons. Starting with fall. Otoño. Otoño. Invierno. Invierno. Winter. Primavera. Primavera. Spring. Verano. Verano. Summer. Muy bien. Ahora los colores. Let's review our colors. Rojo. Rojo. Red. Amarillo, amarillo, yellow. And remember, amarillo will change to amarilla if what it's describing ends in an A. Or is what we call feminine. And for second grade, remember, if it's a feminine noun, it'll have a la in front. Amarillo, amarilla. Azul, azul, blue. Anaranjado, anaranjado, anaranjada, anaranjada, orange. Morado, morado, morada, morada. You also see the word purpura. That's another word for purple. Sometimes you will hear violeta. Verde. Verde, green, 
and you can't really see this one. Blanco, blanco, blanca, blanca. Negro, negro, negra, negra. So blanco, blanca, white. Negro, negra, black. Marrón, café. There's two words, dos palabras for brown. There's actually more, but I'm just teaching you two. Marrón, café. For pink, rosado, rosada. Sometimes you will hear rosa, which they mean pink. Two that are not listed that we learned for gold, dorado, dorada. Silver, plateado, plateada. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a repasar las formas. We're going to review shapes, just some of the shapes. También con colores. We're also going to use our colors. Triángulo marrón. Triángulo marrón. Brown triangle. Cuadrado rojo. Cuadrado rojo. Red square. Do you remember the name of this shape? Corazón rosado. Corazón rosado. Círculo negro. Círculo negro. Black circle. Estrella. Estrella amarilla. Estrella amarilla. And this is an example of how amarillo changes to amarilla because estrella ends in an A. Rectángulo. Rectángulo azul. Remember we put the color after the shape. Rectángulo azul. In English, you say blue rectangle. In Spanish, we say rectangle, rectangulo, azul. Rectangle blue. So today, we are going to be looking at an artist from Spain, and his name was Joan Miro, Joan Miro. I'm going to share my screen and talk a little bit about him and why we're learning about him. Joan Miro was an artist from Spain. He was born in 1883 and he passed away in 1983. He was very famous artist in surrealism and cubism. And what that really is, is that his art was almost dreamlike and he used a lot of geometric shapes when he was creating his art. As you can see here, you can look at his painting and see images of people or animals, however you see them, but also how they're created with a lot of geometric shapes or formas. So he was born in Barcelona and he went to art school there at the age of 14. And he started to develop his own style and drawing trees and landscapes. And in the 1930s, his, his style changed under the influence of one of his friends, Pablo Picasso. And that's when he started to draw in what is a surrealist style, almost dreamlike, and how if he was drawing a landscape, how he imagined the landscape would look like. And especially, he used a lot of geometric shapes. Now, when he was younger, his parents did not want him to be an artist. They wanted him to go to business school. And he actually started and enrolled in business school, but then he got very sick. 
And he decided after he got better that he was going to do what he really wanted to do, and that was to be an artist. If you look at his artwork, you can see a lot of formas, the things we've been learning about. He uses also a lot of primary colors in his painting. On the top, in the smile of the flamboyant wings, even his titles are dreamlike. You see a círculo rojo, a red circle, and a estrella azul, a blue star. And you can kind of imagine what he is drawing from looking at just the shapes. Even at the bottom one, the figure at night, guided by the phosphorus and track, tracks of snails, you can see images if you see animals, animales, you will see that in the mix also with the shapes. On the top, in the melancholic singer, that is how he imagines a singer to look like. You can almost see the singer kind of getting ready to, to say a, a, lar, a loud note almost. I can see with the circulos, kind of the head and the, um, the, the arms, with the lineas, the lines. And so he uses a lot of geometric shapes, again, to share what he um, interprets or sees as a singer singing. In the bottom picture, the magic of color, we see tres círculos, three circles, círculo amarillo, yellow circle, círculo rojo, red circle, y un círculo pequeño que es negro. And we see a small circle, that is black in the magic of color. On the top, you see the people and dog in sun. And you can see almost a person running. And you can imagine where the dog is, the perro, kind of below. The bottom picture is a landscape picture. And you see, even in the landscape that he's drawing, the vines and the olive trees, you still see the geometric shapes in the landscape that he's drawing. On the top, we see a dancer and how he imagines a dancer to look like. And we see a corazón rojo, red heart. The bottom picture is from a town, Prades, in 1917, it's a village. And we can see almost the town in the background. And then closer to us, we see a lot of lineas, lines, and triangulos, triangles, as he draws the landscape. I'm gonna stop share for a moment. On the next slide, we are going to see, um, there's a video I'd like for you to watch, and it's a young woman from the museum in Detroit, Michigan. And she's going to share about one of her pictures, of one of, Joan Miro's famous drawings that is actually at, um, I believe, in the museum in Detroit. And she's going to share a little bit about why she likes it and what you see in the painting. And that's for something to you for you to watch later on. Also, there is an activity that um, I'm going to show you in a moment where you, we can actually draw a picture in the style of Joan Miro. So I'm gonna show that to you right now and how I want you, uh, it's almost like a game. And let me just X out of this so you can see. I'm going to skip over the drawing and the video, but I definitely want you to watch the video because she gives a really great um, discussion. And it's a short video, video it's about six minutes. So let me just show this. So this game, we're going, um, you need a, a dice. If you don't have one, on the next slide, there's a link that you can click on. And it's a computer dice. So you click on, once you click on the link, it'll show you a dice and you click on the dice and it'll turn for you. So how this works is you roll the dice. On your first roll, if you land on a one, a dot that's just one, you're gonna look for the, the dice that matches you, what you rolled on the first roll, and you're gonna draw one of the shapes uh, that says on the column first roll, large shape. You're gonna draw one of those shapes really big on your paper. 
the size of the paper, really big. And then, and there's directions on the bottom too of um, this paper. So you're gonna draw it big. And then you're gonna add three lines that are what we call horizontal, they go this way, that intersect your shape. And then vertical lines, that means they go up and down, that again, cross over your shape. So for the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth roll, whatever you roll, if you, let's say, let's say you on your second roll, you land on a two, you get, you roll out a two, then I look at the second roll, for the two, it's almost like a sun drawing. So it says for each roll after the next, second through the sixth roll, you can draw whatever shape that is uh, up to one to five times all over your picture. And then at the end of it, once you get to your sixth roll and you draw that shape, whatever that is, whatever you land on, um, you when you're done and you look at it, you can even add some color and it will kind of look like a John Miro painting. Now, if that seems a little too difficult for you to um, complete, and I understand that's a lot of directions to roll the dice and draw, you could do something else. You could take all of these shapes and in the next, on the last slide in my Google slide, there is a video that I'm going to share, and it's a lady talking about how to draw in the style of Joan Miro. And it was a video for a summer camp, but I thought the idea was really great. And so you can use all of the images on the Miro fantasy landscapes and pick from them and design your own drawing. And you can watch how she does it. She has her own different symbols that she chooses, but you have yours, this paper right here, and you can design your own picture. So you can use the dice, that's one option, or you can just design your own and watch the video at the end to see how the, um, the artist did hers. So you have two options. You can follow the game and create your own picture, and you just use a blank piece of paper and draw and use the dice, or you can use all the designs that are on that Joan Mito fantasy landscape and design your own picture just by choosing what you want and coloring. So you have the option to do either one, take a picture of your work and send it in to me. I'd love to see it. Hasta luego.